ZipRecruiter is a proud sponsor of Without Warning Podcast. Use code word WOW and search for jobs anytime, anywhere. The Lauren Agee case was hastily closed by authorities, but many questions remain. Come behind the curtain with private investigator Sheila Waisaki as she uncovers the truth about what happened to Lauren. This is Without Warning. Warning. The following episode contains details about sexual violence and elements that are graphic in nature. Nano and Lauren are best friends. I looked at it as Blake, Hunter, and Bull's my best friend. I know for 110%, if I woke up and I could not find my best friend, the last thing I'm going to worry about is going to some damn lake fest. Lauren's ex-boyfriend, Clint, was at Wakefest that weekend. As you've heard, all the campers who were with Lauren kept claiming Lauren had intentions of getting back with Clint, and she had gone to find him late Saturday night after leaving Fish Lips. As a rule of thumb, I make it a point to clear any boyfriend or ex-boyfriend as suspects right away. So let's get to Clint's side of the story. Did you witness Lauren at all? Like, did you see her drinking? Did you see her talking to anybody? You just no, ignored that her? that was, uh, well, Friday, no. <clears throat> and then Saturday, when we were leaving, I just remember us walking back, and I was, because Evan was with us, and I was making sure he was coming, and I looked back, and Evan was kind of talking to Lauren, like, right at the end of walking out the door, mm-hmm. and that was it. Okay. All right. Um, and then he wound up catching back up with us, so I don't. Right. I don't, that was it. That was the only time that I seen her or anything all weekend. Okay. Sherry Smith also talked with Clint about what happened that night. Did she try at any point to like confront you or kiss you or do anything like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, see, so the Saturday, yeah, Saturday night, I was walking up to the bar about right when I got there, about around nine o'clock. And she tried to come up. She tried to, like, walk and talk to me, and I just turned around and walked the other way because I wasn't trying to have any kind of commotion go on in there, and i get in trouble. But that was, and then the Friday night, whenever Samantha and them told them to come over there and throw ice at me. Okay, but that was Friday night. That. Okay. That was Friday night. Okay. Cause Saturday, Saturday, I did not, I didn't, uh, we did not speak of a word. I was fear and... I don't even know if she was coming to talk to me. We were just kind of walking, you know, and you look and you see, like, uh, I'm about to meet that person. Yeah. And just kind of, I just kind of veered off and just kept walking. Clint had multiple alibis that weekend, including his cousin Evan. Evan can also testify to Clint's interaction or lack thereof with Lauren. Friday night, did Lauren hit, slap, throw a drink at Clint? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I don't even think Clint and Lauren spoke the entire weekend. Okay. She did not try to kiss you at some point? No. Okay. We never got that close to even. Okay. okay. I mean, the closest we got was, like, whenever I was walking, and we were maybe two yards from each other, and I, I didn't speak to her, and we didn't talk. That was it. Okay. Clint wanted nothing to do with Lauren that weekend. He also had great alibis after leaving Fish Lips. If you recall, Evan, Callie, and Clint left Fish Lips, joined another group at their RVs, and then went to sleep, which Evan's mother, Teresa, verified. Now let's listen to what Clint and Evan experienced Sunday morning. Before we went out onto the lake on Sunday, me... My dad and Clint walked down to, uh, not Fish Lips, but the little marina store beside of it. Right. And we walked there and got coffee and ice to put in the coolers. Whenever we were walking out of that store and, you know, going back up towards our campsite, Mm -hmm. we saw them and Hannah came up to me and, you know, was just, thought it was a regular day and... Uh, you know, she said, hey, have you saw Lauren? Have you talked to her? Uh, you know, we haven't saw her since last night. She didn't come back. 
and we was just wondering if she stayed with y'all or, you know, where she was. I was like, oh, well, I don't know. We left Fish Lips, and she said she was going back. So, because I specifically remember Hannah asking me, she said, well, you know, if you hear from her or see her, uh, have her call us because we don't know where she's at. But she didn't say we're looking for her. No. I mean, not necessarily, but, Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that would be implied. Okay. Uh, But, you know, she just said, you know, we don't know where she is, so if you can, just... You say you're have her call us. And she specifically said Lauren did not come back that night. Yes. And I said, well, you need to get on the phone and you need to. And that's when I kept asking Evan all Saturday, have you heard from Lauren? Have you heard mm-hmm. from Lauren? Like I said, the only thing I remember is her asking me, you know, have you saw Lauren? We haven't saw her since last night at the bar. She didn't come back. If you see her, talk to her, tell her to call us. Now let's hear Clint's story from Sunday morning. Did anybody ask you on Sunday if you had seen Lauren? Yes, I was walking to the boat to get in our boat to go back for the last day that Sunday. And Hannah came up to me and was like, hey, have you spoken or talked to Lauren or has Lauren tried to call you or anything like that? And I was like, I don't have any service up here. I was like, my phone's been off and I have not talked to her the last time I... Last time I seen her is whenever we were leaving Fish Lips and she was talking with Evan. That was the last time I seen her. Okay, did what was her? I don't know. I don't know where she went with because Evan Evan wound up catching back up with us before we even got to the camper or got to where we were staying at. So I don't know what happened after that because like we were walking and Evan caught back up with us and he was by himself. So okay, so when you saw Hannah on Sunday. Was there a guy with her that asked you if you'd seen Lauren? No, it was Hannah who asked it was me. Just Hannah. Okay. In an earlier episode, you heard Aaron Lilly say that he was with Hannah and spoke to Clint. Clint only saw Hannah. He never saw or spoke to Aaron Lilly. Did you find anything peculiar about Hannah's behavior? I mean, I thought it was, I mean, what? I, this is how I put it. I I tried to, like, look at it, and I said, all right, Hannah, Hannah and Lauren are best friends. I looked at it as Blake Hunter or Bull's my best friend. I know for 110%, if I woke up and I could not find my best friend, the last thing I'm going to worry about is going to some damn wake fest. Exactly. I'm I'm gonna. Start, I'm probably gonna. I'm probably gonna look for a good thirty minutes to an hour, and then I'm probably gonna go to Fish Lips or the security and say I can't find my friend. I don't know where he's at. I don't know what's. I don't know. I know that he was here last night, and I woke up and he's not here. Exactly. Clint makes a very good point about how strange it was that Lauren's best friend went off to the Wakefest events all day and didn't report her missing until later that afternoon because i remember when we were when we were, we were leaving we were getting back off the boat ramp probably 4 35 and i remember seeing the twra boat check, going back in that little cove and i'm pretty sure hannah and them were already gone and i just i remember lauren's car still be sitting there that's the reason i got i got a weird feeling in my stomach because right. they said they couldn't find her and then her car was still there i was like but the, I, I just, you know, it just makes you start thinking, like, crap. I, know. What, I mean, what, it, what is going on? And then, then that Samantha called me and told him that what all happened. When Evan told his mom what Hannah said to him that morning, Teresa's maternal sense went off. Well, those kids stay in touch. And this is what really, really bothered me all day Sunday, is because Evan and Lauren stayed in touch Saturday. Uh, I think Friday night he knew, or Saturday morning he knew she got there. And then 
Saturday night, um, you know, they left. They went up to somebody else's campsite. It was Bart and Clint and Callie and I forget who all went. But I think a group of them went. But then they were back at our campsite when we when I got up that morning, like at 5, 30, 6 o'clock. They were all back in their tents that morning. And I think maybe I left them at around midnight, something like that. I'm not for sure, mm -hmm. but it was before Fish Lips closed. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't too terribly late either mm -hmm. for a lake weekend. But what concerned me is when Evan goes, Lauren said something about maybe coming out on the boats with us today. I said, that's fine. And um, because we have some friends, Glenda and Jeff Ledford, they have a houseboat there, and all their kids were up there, and they have a boat. And so um, I said, well, that's fine. And so that morning, I believe it was Sunday morning, is when Evan and my husband saw Hannah and one of the boys at the marina getting ice. And I said, Evan, I just don't have a good feeling I said, I just don't have something about me being a mom. I don't have a good feeling. We were coming in off the lake. And with me being a nurse, I know if it's an emergency, the ambulance is going to have their flashers on. So when we were pulling into the marina, I looked over and there was the ambulance. had its lights on and it turned them off. And it was near where Lawrence and them were camping. And I told Evan, I said, Evan, I don't have a good feeling. I said, I am really concerned that something's happened to Lauren. And when we got out on the road to where we could get some reception, he got word. I don't know how he got the right, word. Right, right. Um, but anyway, he goes, well, I just know Sherry and them just got a call. They're on the way to the hospital. And I knew right then. I knew. Evan and Clint also recall the moment they found out it was Lauren in the water. I believe it was Chase that called me and he was bawling his eyes out mm -hmm. and said it was her. How did you find out that she was dead? Samantha Arnold actually was the one that called me that said that Sher I guess Sherry called her to say that the cab county called her or asked her to come up there. And then I think she called me back like 45 minutes later and was like, it was Lauren, and that, and that was it. I called him and he called me back. Like, I, he, like, I called him first. And then um, he called me back because he was sick. He was like, I was like, what the fuck's going on? He was like, what do you mean? I was like, nobody could find Lauren. He was like, I mean, I'm not saying anything. He was like, but when we were coming back in from Wake Fest Sunday night around 5 o'clock, they were pulling someone out of the water, but they said it was a boy. Is what Clint told me. Okay. And I was like, so that's when I freaked out, and I called James, and I talked to James about it. Who's James? And I heard it. Oh. Oh, okay. Samantha calls Lauren's biological dad, James. And I popped James. Um, I called him, and I was like, I don't know what's going on, but, like, it's freaking me out. Like, I was with her, like, not even a little bit ago, and now everybody's saying, like, something's happened. Well, then I talked to Clint again. He said that it was a boy, and then I believe I called Sherry. Sherry was on the phone with me, and she said, Samantha, she was like, I know you know something. Don't bullshit me. Tell me everything you know. And I was like, all right. They pulled someone out of the water, and I told her, like, oh, spill. It was like 5 o'clock. They pulled someone out of the water. They don't know, but apparently the Cab County is has Hannah and Aaron and all that. And at the police station. So she waited, it was like 40, maybe 40 minutes later. She gave me a call and she was like, the Cab County called me and told me that I need to come down there. They didn't tell me what had happened. They didn't tell me if she was okay, if she was alive, or if she was dead. But they just told me I need to get down there now. And Mike's going 90 on the interstate. And I was like, I was like, just keep me posted. And then Papa James is the one that called me back and let me know. After Lauren's death, a lot of rumors and lies were being spread about Clint having something to do with Lauren's death. Throughout all the lies and gossip, Sherry couldn't separate the truth from lies and asked Clint not to come to the funeral. 
So we, um, we understand that Sherry called you, I didn't know this until uh, this week when Evan told me, called you and said not to come to the funeral? Yeah, well, I was called, I called her just to show my apologies mm-hmm. and this and that and said I was sorry, and then she was just like, I just may feel it best, and maybe if you don't come to the visitation or anything like that, uh, just because a lot of people have a lot of questions and I'll this and that. I'll tell you where that came from. And all that, so I was just okay, and then I proceeded to all of Lauren's friends calling me saying no. I I was I was just trying to show my respects mm-hmm. or whatever, so it wound up being that I just went to the funeral and went They told me to come in like right when it started, and I sat up in the balcony. Like many others going to the funeral, Clint thought Lauren had fallen off the cliff. But when he saw Lauren's body, he was surprised. Yeah, I mean, that that was the thing, because I know whenever I talked to everyone about saying about not me not going to the funeral, and then they said, yeah, it was an open casket, and I was expecting, like, dang, I was expecting way worse if you fell off it's about i don't know it's about as high as this shop or maybe more 38 feet on one side 90 feet on the other oh yeah that's pretty good Mm -hmm. yeah so so you would not hannah would not be somebody that would call you then i take it after wake fest to talk to you at the funeral or anything she wouldn't talk to you Uh, y'all would wouldn't be friends no i'm trying to think I want to say I want to say I call, might have called her after or whenever because I didn't know like all the that's about Sherry not speaking with them because I was about how Sherry told me not to come mm-hmm. so I was just trying to figure out where that kind of came from so that I think but that was about it I haven't spoke to her I don't know anything about her I don't even know what she does anymore. So you've heard a lot about Clint, her ex. Who you haven't heard from yet is the guy she was dating at the time she passed. His name is Chase, and he didn't attend Wakefest. I sat down with him to find out where he was that weekend and what he knew. So Lauren never said to you, "Eh, I'm not really comfortable going this weekend. I don't feel good about Hannah. It was none of that. They only... Was It was just like, Mom, uh, you know, I'm going just to make Hannah happy. You know, like, Mom, I'm, I'm just going because I haven't seen Hannah. Like I said, it to me, Lauren was going to have a good time. She was okay because Mom and Mom was okay because we were both knowing Lauren will be back Saturday. So you're going Friday. Okay. So I think to Lauren, too, is... I can do a day. I haven't seen it's okay. I haven't seen Hannah in forever. It'll make her it'll make her happy. Let's just I'll get it over with. Like I mean I'm still gonna have a great time because I love being on the boat and being out on the lake too. So yeah, I I I know mom was more worried because she knows Hannah. And so I had I had heard the concerns before, but to Lauren it was, you know. It, it'll be fine. Like it's, it'll be okay. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll be okay. So pretty much, she got this. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, I know. I know who Hannah is. I know that we're not the bestest of friends, but I'm the bigger person, and I'll, I'll do this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So Lauren's up there. She had no cell service. Yeah. She, and so, did you text her or did you call her? Or, um, I mean, even though you know she had no cell service, did you try that or did you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, there was uh, plenty of text messages that I sent during that weekend. That Friday night was, which I thought she was staying at a cabin. I think she did too. I think that's the incentive to go down there. Well, on top of Wake Fest, we've got a cabin too. Um, so Friday it was, Hey, you know, Hey baby, we just got here. My service is very spotty. I've got it right now. I'll talk to you when I can. Love you. Love you too. Talk to you later. I think, uh, the next morning, Hey, what's going on? How's your day? A couple hours later, what time do you think you'll be getting in tonight? I went through with the party already. So I had uh, I had 20 people from my high school over 
at my apartment waiting. And, and they, everybody wasn't just sitting around waiting because obviously I hadn't, there was no bad news yet. But I was telling all my friends that were there, I was like, I, I haven't heard from her. I don't know if she's, I don't know. I was, I was and I wasn't too worried because that's the way Lauren was. That's how we even got here in the first place is whether or not she, whether, I wasn't even worried about her being with other guys because I know, that's not how our relationship was in the first place. Like as soon as she told me that it was Hannah, it didn't matter if there was three or four guys up there anyway. It, that wasn't a worry on my mind. So I was just she's having she's having a lot of fun. She's probably been drinking. She doesn't need to drive, and she'll be home Sunday morning. That's all I was thinking. So. I stayed up till about two o'clock that Saturday waiting, but went to bed and woke up and that's when it started getting real. Like, okay, nobody's heard from her. Wow. Oh, that just gives me chills. Um the mm-hmm. the waiting for her and then and waking up and then asking Sherry. When Chase woke up on Sunday after not hearing from Lauren all night, he called Sherry who hadn't heard from her either. When Sherry got word that something had happened, Chase drove himself to the hospital to meet up with Sherry and Mike, not knowing exactly what happened. Boy, I'm sorry you had to go alone. That just hurts my heart. But again, I understand who would have thought. Right, right. Sherry had the same feeling. Oh, she's, if she, she said, please let her be paralyzed. I'll take care of her for the rest of her life. You know, don't let her anything else happen, yeah yeah you know that's, that's i was just thinking okay this is this is this is why i'm here i'm here to this is why i'm with her like this is gonna show how much i love her like you know what i'm saying like if that's the case like okay she's alive it thank god she's thank god she's alive no matter what state she in you know but Sherry, can you tell me who you received phone calls from on your way to the DeKalb County Hospital? Well, of course, you know, we were driving as fast as we possibly could. What I remember is Brian called, of course, you know, Lauren's father several times, and then I received a phone call from Samantha Arnold where she stated to me that somebody that had been at Wakefest had called her and said that they had pulled a body out of the water that afternoon and of course you know <laughs> my stomach just sank I just wanted to throw up and I was like oh my god oh my god and and then after I hung up with her I kept calling the hospital calling the hospital and they wouldn't tell me anything so it was a drive from hell the whole way there Well, the way my dad is, <laughs> he picked me up, I think, the day, the day after. So the morning I woke up, and it being, you know, the first day that she's not here. I was crying and crying, and, you know, he had some tough love and said, you, you need to get used to things like this because you're young, and this is going to happen a lot. And... And what happened with Lauren will will be figured out, but it's not going to be about you. So that was one thing that I had to swallow because I wanted to, you know, take my you know take my revenge, go out and be you know, you know James Bond so to speak, and you know handle my business. But I know that's not how the real world is. I knew I couldn't have hate in my heart because anything that I was feeling wasn't hurting anybody but me. So that when I when I learned that is when I turned the attitude of how I'm gonna be. But the first week, I mean, I have I like to brag on my work ethic, but that that first two weeks I didn't go to work. I was laying in bed, not being productive, feeling sorry for myself, feeling, you know, like any you know, it's it's natural responses, but I knew this isn't healthy for me to do, and that's not who Lauren was, and that's not how she would want me to be. And I had to learn that through, you know, people telling me, people 
giving me advice and you know i would take pieces of everything i heard and make it into my own so i don't think it was i don't think it was you know honestly up until a month and a half two months where i got myself back out on the scene and started going out and drinking on the weekends trying to forget about stuff and you know that's when that's when i got a lot of and you know i could be wrong but speculations that i'd forgotten and i didn't care and it didn't matter to me and all this stuff which i which i've gotten not anymore but i did i did get that kind of energy you know like i said i've taken so many things from all the bad stuff that's happened because you know uh, you know i had people asking me you know how could you especially people that knew my ex-girlfriend cuz my ex-girlfriend and Lauren were friends at one point who was your ex-girlfriend Whitney Jackson she the one that passed away yes Okay, so she and Lauren were friends. We're friends, yes. So when I got the tattoo of Lauren was when I heard backlash of, you know, you were with Whitney for three years and you were only with Lauren A and how could you and yada, yada, yada. But based, like I said, it was from everybody that wasn't in our, my relationship. As I do with all of my interviews, I ask Chase very personal questions. You know, Lauren demanded that we're not going to have sex until I'm in love with you and I know I want to be with you the rest of my life. I'd never had a girl tell me that. Say that, demand it from a man, you know, we're going to do this the right way. And that's what, I mean, I I mean, I, I wasn't a person like that. I wasn't, didn't live like that. Knew that was the right way. Always been in church, but I wasn't living like that. And, I mean, it wasn't until... Six months in, and we were only together eight, is when we first had sex. So my relationship with her the first six months was falling in love with literally her, not even, be, like, physically, you know? And, it, and that, I mean, it was, you know, I've never had a relationship like it. I, I was telling my friends, like, you know, you, you got to quit having sex, you know, just being silly about it, like, your relationship's going to be much better if you just focus on, you know, falling in love with each other first and... We were the bestest of friends, and but you know, me, me, and me being in that prior relationship taught me how to be in my next relationship for Lauren. So that's what I always attest to Lauren is I hold high standards for myself now. Something that's very important to me and who I want to be with and who I tell I love, so I don't throw it around lightly. And when someone says it to me, I'm I I got to correct it real quick because I'm so. I'm so I feel so strongly about the subject now that I've been been in a relationship like that so the fact that Lauren wanted to wait to have sex with him was a sensitive topic for Chase to talk about at first so sensitive he didn't even want it to become public knowledge however after I explained to him how important it was for listeners to hear what Lauren's true character was he agreed do you know if she was on her period or not? Mm, I do not know that. Okay. I do not know. Okay. I'm just... We did not have sex the morning of that she left. Okay. But it, it's been so long. I, I know. Think. And that's a, a odd question. Right, But right, there's right. a reason. But no, but usually uh, uh, the boyfriend does know. Right. Yeah, for sure. But right. No, it's been so well, long. Well, do you I think you would know if she was? That would have been something you would have remembered? Yeah. Okay. What do you think happened up there? I think maybe one of them was trying to get with Lauren. I don't think it happened. I think she turned it down real quick. Her, you know, her blunt response is, no, that, you know, it's never going to happen, yada, yada, yada. Maybe there was some tension the last day or two with, you know, them him trying to get with her or something, uh, you know, them being, I know how it is when everybody's drinking on the boat and bathing suits too. I know what everybody's ultimate goal is. I mean, we're, tw we're 23 and 24 years old now. Everybody's you know, wanting some ass and wanting to hook up. I mean, there, there's no secret about that. So I think that's what was going on. Um, I don't, knowing Lauren, I know drugs weren't involved with her. So I wanted to make the, the theory that she was wanting to leave because she found out there was drugs. They didn't want her to leave because they thought she might tell somebody. 
Lauren may some say something smart ass and say, you know what, I am going to tell and I'm going to, you know, whatever. And got them upset. And where it gets weird with me is the, the trauma on the back of her head, because I don't know if, I don't know if one of them pushed her, not trying to physically like kill her, but knocking her out. And then, then them getting scared or it did kill her and her head hit her on a rock or, but then that doesn't explain, you know, the bruises everywhere else. So that's what makes me think that it, it was something where the guy wanted something and she wasn't going and things got heated up there. And so I knew, I knew that she put up a fight cause that's how she is in anything. So I think that's what, um, escalated everything. It's cause you know, knowing her, and it, knowing her, if it would have, if she would have gotten out of that, they would have probably all gotten in trouble for something. So maybe that's what they're scared about. Like I said, I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah. Had she survived, they had were... she survived, they're either scared about her almost being raped, or all the drugs that they had. I do ultimately think they killed her myself with their bare hands and then drug her to the woods down the down the cliff and put her in the, the water now i don't know whether or not hannah was physically holding on to lauren doing it herself it doesn't really matter to me but do you feel like everybody who was up there knows what happened mm-hmm. for sure for sure and i do i don't feel at a default but that's where it's i don't even know these people firsthand but everything I've heard about them isn't good, so. But it doesn't take away anything that I think's happened at all. I mean, it, the, you know, when I saw her in the casket, you know, and that may be graphic for some people, but if you're there, you know, if you could, t- you knew something wasn't right. You just knew. Lauren's family gives their full permission for any and all details to be shared in hope that the truth will come out. If you know anything at all, call 1-888-599-0008 or email tips at sheilawysaki.com. Next time on Without Warning. So I'm in this situation where I want to help as much as I can, but other people think that my lawyer should be present. It's whatever you want to do. I don't feel like I have anything to hide. Without warning, host executive director and executive producer, Sheila Waisaki. Producers, Katie Zitzman and Aaron Parker. Editors, Katie Zitzman and Aaron Parker. Mixing and mastering by Resonate Recordings. Narrator, Tim Evans. Thank you for listening to Without Warning. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and leave us a quick review to help others discover it too. If you or someone you know knows something about this case or the people involved, you can submit tips by emailing tips at shilawaisaki.com.